After attending the LARHS train show, which I went to in February, I didn't really expect to go to another train show for quite a while. That was until I heard about the return of Train Thunder, a train show held by the Nebraska-Iowa Railroaders, which I went to back in May of 2022. This year, it was being held in the city of Papillion, just outside of Omaha, and so I figured that I might as well go and take a look. Now, this year, I didn't get as much train show footage, partly because we spent much of the day rail fanning on the way, and so I'll have a future video coming out about all the trains we saw there. But um, even though I didn't get very much footage, I still got a little bit, and so we'll go through that real quick, and then we'll get right into the hall which I promise will be relatively interesting. Um, I might have bought a thing. Now I gotta make sure I don't run into everything with this. You'll find out. <laughs> Maybe I am going to have to buy this. Oh, there's more of them. There's more train there layouts was, on train I layouts. I saw this. Oh, that's awesome. We got to get layout section. And that's all the footage I got. I know it's not much and, uh, yeah, way less than I normally film at train shows, but um, there was still quite a bit to chew on, I think. It was a nice show, really. And I recognized quite a few vendors and layouts that they had there. And so now we can get straight into the hall, starting off big with the burning question of what was in the box that nearly ran into multiple things. Well, let me show you. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Preparing the Krabby Patty! Ladies and gentlemen, we have got ourselves quite the stack train. And as you can tell, this is quite the interesting piece. Um, so I saw this at the show, and it definitely caught my eye. And I think the most interesting thing about this is the price. Because I got this for a whopping $50. I was really not expecting such a massive stack train set, which takes up almost my entire layout, to cost only 50 bucks. I think that that is pretty much an amazing price for... Um, such a massive uh, train, and I know that it's not as well detailed, I'll get into that in a second, and how like some like more high-end uh, sets of stack cars are better, like more quality, but I mean, those can go for hundreds of dollars, like at least 300, most likely well over that, so to see one of these in with under the triple digits is... It's rather uncommon, but it's nice to see, and the price is obviously a very interesting thing, but there are quite a few interesting things about this set from what I'm noticing. The first thing is actually its manufacturer. When I first got this, I kind of assumed that it was produced by K-Line. It just had like the look and the feel of something that you would get from K-Line, and I do still think that parts of it were made from K-Line. However, According to the box, and I'm seeing this, it's more apparent now, this is actually homemade. So I guess some crafty model railroader just kind of scratch-built his own O-scale stack train. 
which, I mean, that's quite apparent, but that is not a bad thing. For one thing, that is quite impressive, and for another thing, um, it's kind of rare, honestly, to see, like, a kind of homemade OCL model train, especially in the present day, and it still, it still looks like a well-made product. I mean, you can tell it's homemade, but that's not exactly a bad thing. It still looks like a nice train, and I do still like it. Um, and with the homemade, besides the homemade thing, uh, I've noticed that there are a few quirks with this train, which might explain part of why it's cost so low. There might be a few catches with that. And the first catch that I noticed is this. You hear that? Uh, yeah, it gets points for sounding realistic, but, um, obviously model trains are not supposed to make that noise. And I found out real quick that one of the trucks is rusted, so that's not great. I mean, it's a great, it's an amazing display piece, but if I'm gonna run this thing, actually, that won't fly. We cannot have that, so I'm not very experienced with rust and how to remove it, but I'm sure there are ways to do so, and I'm sure there are people who know how to do it, so, um, if anyone knows, please, uh, give me a little holler, but it's all right. Either way, it's not terrible. I mean, we'll get it figured out at some point, most likely, and it's still, I mean, it's still a nice train otherwise, but there's another interesting little quirk with this, and it's that... Some of the containers are super glued together. Now, I'm not entirely sure why. It's another, like, kind of weird little quirk that this train has. Though, so then again, every train has something about it. But, um, yeah, I don't know why it's super glued. It's not a big deal. It's just kind of interesting. It, it's different. Let's just say that. It's different. In fact, a lot of things about this train is different. It's This is definitely one of the more interesting trains that I've seen come through a train show, and that's partly in a good way, because it, like I said, it is kind of neat that it's homemade, and again, even though it has a few caveats, again, for $50, I think that this whole thing is honestly pretty good, because you're getting a whole set of five well cars, plus all 10 containers included, all that for only 50 bucks, even if there are some things that we have to work out, I'd say that's a pretty good deal. So obviously, the addition of this massive stack train is a great new addition for my O-scale layout, but as for the HO layout, I've made some progress there too, starting off with a new passenger car. Obviously, this is a Walther's Amtrak Superliner, specifically a sleeping car. Now, I already have two Amtrak Superliners, one by Kato and one by Walther's, and the Walther's one is actually a sleeper as well. But the thing is, those are my t only two Amtrak Superliners. I have a few other Amtrak cars, but they don't work as good. And so lately, I've really been trying to lengthen my HO Amtrak trains and make them look more like an actual Amtrak train, not just my Genesis towing around two passenger cars. So I think that this will uh, go along with my existing Superliner fleet quite nice. And it was only 50 bucks, which I think for an HO Superliner is not too bad. So, um, yeah, let's get this open. Should be quick. And there it is, and it's Amtrak Phase 4 Glory. It's actually a very well-made piece. I'll have to get this onto my layout real soon. I'm getting excited to run this. But first, there are a few final cars that we have here in the hall, and these will go nicely in the freight department for my HO layout. We have one, two, I'll have to move these back, three covered hoppers. Um, quite nice, and as you can tell, they are weathered very nicely. We got Burlington Northern, Cooperative Marketing Association, some kind of smaller carrier, and of course, Union Pacific. And I think, oh, there goes the power line. Anyway, um, I think that the vendor who sold these, I've, I've seen him at previous train shows, most notably the LARHS show. 
I considered getting some of his hoppers because these are very well weathered, as you can tell. And they've got knuckle couplers, so that's even better. And they they usually go for only about like 10 or so dollars. So all around, there's some very nice cars. I'm not exactly sure who they're made by, but they're still nice cars for a very good price. But now I actually managed to get some of them. And I did a little bit of negotiating, but in the end, I got these three cars for a total of only $27. Which, doing the math, that's about $9 per car. And considering that these have knuckle couplers and some pretty good weathering, I'd say that $27 for the three of these is honestly really good. That's quite a bargain. So, yeah, that's really neat. Nice to have some more covered hoppers, because I feel it's always good to have some covered hoppers. And so let's get these and the Superliner onto the Yacho layout. Now, I did try to run my Amtrak Superliners together, and I do really like my new Superliner. It's, it's a great looking car. It goes well with the train, except we are currently having a bit of operating issues with the P42. Oh gosh. But it looks good. I notice it doesn't have like the shiny finish as the old one. I don't know why, but it, I'm not too worried about that. And I like it either way. Can you stop jittering, please? I don't know why it does this. The covered hoppers are looking great too. I mean, can you move, please? So I don't really understand why, but we'll get it figured out as always. So in the meantime, I figured that I would run some of my new covered hoppers on a bit of a unit grain train, so let's get that running here. I'm kind of in the back, so it might take a little while for them to come, but they'll get her. I will say, these hoppers look great. They blend in pretty well, and they definitely help make this grain train a little bit longer, a bit more impressive. Might be sawn on the hill a little. Yeah, I think we're stalling. Oh anyway, well. Still moving. And we got derailment, so let's fix there we go. There we go. Okay. The train broke. My gosh. Anyway, uh, yeah, I like the hoppers. They, they're nice. Anyway. So, as you can probably tell, on both layouts, we definitely have some teething troubles that we gotta work out. As is the case with the outcome of pretty much every train show, but we will hopefully get there in the end. Sooner or later, we'll just find out. But um, that's just that just tends to happen in model railroading, you know? It's We really do not like it, ever, but it, it happens. It's just part of the hobby. That happens in any hobby, honestly. But uh, yeah, so... Even though it had some issues, again, this was a quite productive train show. I'll try to have the rail fanning uh, footage out soon. Uh, thank you for watching, everyone, and God bless.